Yes, please. I hope this is a good final question. I just happen to be in the middle of reading Flash Boys, which I love, and I'm just wondering, in the last couple of years, since the period that book covers, what would you say the most significant developments or evolutions might have been since Flash Boy time? I, I'm having a hard time hearing the end yeah. of your question. Could, oh, you couldn't hear but me? I think if we ended with the panelists commenting on what they thought about that, that would probably no, be a no. good way to end, because no. that book was very, very important. And but that wasn't my question. Oh, could, that, could nobody hear my question? Just the end, I didn't hear. Oh, just what you think the most significant developments or evolutions in the last couple of years since that book have been? What's changed? What's changed since Flash Boys? You, you would obviously. Yeah, okay, so <coughs> this one seems to be right in my wheelhouse. Yeah, it's like uh, that pitch. <laughs> okay. Well, it, it's, it's actually pretty remarkable because in, in some ways not a lot has changed and then in other ways there's been very dramatic change. So you've seen some of the largest fines that have been levied uh, against dark pool operators in history. Uh, IEX has applied to become a national stock exchange and our application has been, I think, the most controversial on record. Uh, the last three exchanges had, or excuse me, the last four exchanges had a sum total of three comment letters that were submitted as part of the application process. Ours is approaching, I think, 450. And it's really catalyzed a lot of debate in the industry about market structure, about the fairness in the markets, about uh, the application of technology in the markets. And it really, I think, in a way that we haven't seen in the argument that's raged for the last 10 years, we haven't seen the lines drawn as clearly as they are today. And on the one side, you see asset managers, academics, uh, maybe not universally, but academics, asset managers, uh, agency brokers all lining up in favor of, for example, the IEX application. And on the other side, you have the establishment exchanges and a handful of high-frequency trading firms. And I, and I think that's the first time where you've really seen people have to choose which side of the market that they want to be on. And the outcome of our application is going to say a lot about which direction the U.S. equities market wants to take going forward and into the future. Um, first, I just want to say, while I'm in uh, at this belief that high frequency trading has helped improve the markets. I, as a person, and I'm in favor of your application. I'd really love to see a new player um, in the market, especially in New York. Um, I think the things that I, uh, actually the most important um, developments that have happened since the release of that book for me has been an increase in um, uh, high frequency trading strategies. They haven't let up. I think they have in increased. Um, there has been an increase in rise in dark pools and also the markets are becoming even more and more fragmented. I mean, from my perspective, I think the right number of players should be three or four or five, not 60. And you could argue that there really should be one. But anytime you have one, then you don't have um, sort of that technological uh, improvement over time. Uh, but the point that was made earlier about if there's a buyer and a seller and they can't find each other, you know, that's inefficient, right? Whereas if you had one single marketplace, the buyer always would meet the seller because there'd be one place to meet. Um, so, you know, that would be my two cents. But ultimately, one is unrealistic, so maybe three to five. And the question is, will the regulators, you know, point that in the right direction? I'm not sure what's changed. I would hope that uh, the SEC and I guess the exchanges themselves are somewhat embarrassed by the fact that uh, that book painted them in the light of basically not protecting the investors and the people who are using the, um, the markets. I think that's disappointing. Um, the question would be is whether in fact uh, they're starting to actually bring enforcement actions against people who are actually gaming it. I'd like to see that. And I think I've seen several regulators do something about that on spoofing. Um, Tom, you were talking about the, the guy who's in his mom and dad's basement um, near Heathrow Airport. Um, he made, I believe, something close to like $10 million, and he was um, responsible for at least a quarter of the trade orders in the S&P 500 future. And he apparently canceled, million. He, he canceled something like 99.6% of all orders that he submitted within one second of submitting them. So it seemed as if that guy was playing a little more than just the guy in the basement of his mom and dad's house. Well, I think our panelists are 
tremendous. I, I'm sorry that I was so late. Um, I'm an inefficient market. It's market failure. Um, <clears throat> I, I think that one of the odds, I, I think it's almost, it, the people who created the New York Stock Exchange under the Buttonwood tree would be incredulous about not only the advances that were made, but that they're still, it's such a screwed up system today. I mean, I'm, I bet they think we would have worked it out by this time. I mean, if you go through the history of commissions to look in to why markets are screwed up, they happen almost on every, every 10 years there's another one. And we just never get it right. <coughs> um, I'll give my opinion. Um, um, IEX, you know, um, IEX is asking for an exception. Uh, I'm correct about this, right? Which it calls a speed bump. Its opponents call a pothole. Uh, do I have that correct? Um, <coughs> because of the delay. We haven't asked for an exception. What? We haven't asked for an exception. I just want to clarify. <coughs> so this becomes a heavily nuanced legal debate. Um, my perspective from just a total outsider is I think you should just let the whole thing rip. It shouldn't have to apply to be an exchange. It should just say it's an exchange. And if people want to use IEX, you know, it shouldn't have an exception or a non-exception or this exception or that. You shouldn't have to read 450 letters. And by the way, some are quite entertaining and some are absolutely unreadable. But you know, I, I don't think the regulators have the capacity to understand this stuff. If they're really that smart, they might work for IEX themselves. A couple of them do. I, I just think the system being open and vibrant might be a much better system. And yes, it would still be filled with unfairness and crooks and everything else, but we've added this other level of just incomprehensibility. Um, and so I think we should actually go back to the buttonwood tree, which is right outside, and think of how people could come to market arrangements on their own. But I know of all the ideas that have been voiced here tonight, that is the least conceivable ever coming to any sort of fruition. Um, because a heavily regulated, uh, litigated market is just where we are. And I, I think we're just, it, it has implications for both fairness and unfairness and stability and instability. And we're not going to be able to work our way through this, at least for the next decade, until some other change. And, 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 and it might just be many, many more companies going private and creating their own system, which is actually under, you know, which is actually unfolding. Anyway, thank you very, very much for, for sitting in your seats during now, I too want to thank uh, the panelists. I want to add one anecdote for you all. Uh, in 2009, with our friends from the Stock Exchange, we actually had an exhibit here on early Dutch investing from the early 1600s. We had the share certificate here from 1606 from the Dutch East India Company, the one that in Ocean's 12, they lift the building to steal. I thought Clooney might be coming through the roof here. But in any event, the point is this. Guess how many years it took them, the regulators, to get involved banning naked short selling? 1610, four years only. So the regulation's also as old as the hills. But right now, let's have a drink. Thank you very much to the panelists. We appreciate our friends from the American Scottish Foundation and the University of Edinburgh Business School. Thank you. Mm -hmm.